the new changes, obviously it becomes a much more important and influential part of the map. So we get into the pistol axe. There's Nerd Ridge on the T side, CEX starting on the CT side. Yeah, CEX had the side choice and they choose to start CT. We'll see how that works out for them as we get underway into this game. Two sets of nades for Nerd Rage. So again, suggests they've got something up their sleeve in this pistol round. And it may just end up being this A execute. But look at the aggression from Noob Dog. This is a lot of information early into the round for CEX. Well, Nerd Ridge have pretty much all of their forces stacked over towards the A-bomb site. Smoke going up in towards the top site already. Molotov running in behind. Cypher's going to be forced into the right side, and that's going to be a great headshot. Catching out LNZ, trying to run towards the back of the sandbags. Doesn't quite work for him. And now Nerd Ridge having to play the post plan because they know Frizz is coming in from behind. This lit lurk patient play from Frizza might just be the linchpin of their success as he catches Murky. More players in front of him, but he whiffs the shots. But still, he's caused enough pressure for his teammates to be able to capitalize, to get into better positions, and now he can re-aggress. Oh, Tadpole also coming away with some kills as they move on to the bomb site. MT reloading. How is he alive? He gets away with the kill. MT oh. with two. And now it's up to Brody. One versus two. The defuse happening, but Brody moving it. in. There he denies it. And I don't think there's time. A complete chaotic round on the A bomb site. But it That's is going to be Nerd Rage you win. Well, Nuke Dog looks at a kit as he runs on by. An unfortunate time there for the CEX side, but that flank from Fraser, that really is the stone that unsettles the water. And he comes through the backside, and they were not ready for him. Murky picked off, then the rest of them turn and try to drop him, but Fraser does a good job of staying alive, allowing his teammates to capitalize on the distraction. Yeah, exactly. Even though he doesn't get that second kill, which he, he maybe will be a bit disappointed with, the decision to stay alive was so useful because you saw CEX being scared of both angles. It just made it really difficult for CEX to start that retake when there's so many angles they have to be scared of. It's a very cheeky angle. Ooh. Perfect start, though, for Nerd Ridge. It's all about limiting the casualties and giving us a nice little round with a breather because that was a pretty chaotic pistol. Everything was happening all over the place. But this is a, a much more passive approach. We actually got to uh, talk to LNZ last week, um, sort of hear his thoughts on the CEX roster. Definitely seen a good future for the team, feeling that they can beat everyone. Yeah, they said they were they were putting a fair amount of focus into their team play as well, which was good to hear because there's a good amount of skill on this Nerd Rage squad. Ooh, Murky down the ladder might have a flank going here, but the A play is already coming in. CEX are going to struggle delaying this A site. Well, then, so catches Murky fall away from behind. Brody. A good kill, Cypher picked off. Now MT is the last remaining player. Just the Deagle in his hands, and Brody ends up with a round of win. It's going to be Nerd Ridge up 2-0. to zero. And feeling very happy about this start now at this point. We'll be looking over at CEX to see what they present. It's going to be a FAMAS in the hands of Cypher and Murky. So immediately we're seeing a pretty weak buy coming from the CT side. Definitely wanting to get more utility in than rifles. Yeah, a bunch of famasses, like you were saying. Only the one kit for them, though. I am interested to see how they hold mid here, because Cypher's still playing close, but if he's not careful, he's not got much of a position to fall back to right now. Smoke deployed by the T side. Cypher playing off the back of this. He goes aggressive, and he gets one kill, but now he could be in trouble. The spam through the smoke takes him down, and Nerd Rage win the early battle for mid. Fraser comes around the back side. It's going to be MT who falls. And a two-man advantage in play for Nerd Ridge. This is the kind of start they'd be looking for. Methodical take on the T side. Finding the advantages, winning the battles. Keeping the casualties low. It is only Ping who falls. And now Nerd Ridge gather outside of A. Utility coming in. Smoke up. Flash is at the ready as well to run on in towards the A-bomb site. So absolutely no one here to defend, apart from the player back in the elevator. But even at that, the song has already been taken. The bomb can be planted. And unfortunately, this round is uh, is done. So CEX having to save their weapons on over to the next one. Nerdridge go 3-0 up. This is the start that 
you have to have coming into things if you're Nerdridge and you've got a close game on your hands, statistically speaking. On paper, this should be a close affair, but we've seen that Nerdridge should have had a close game last week as well, but they got off to such a good start that the initial momentum was enough to get them the win. They built up enough of a lead. Good kill from Nuke Dog as he tries to hold on to his gun. He's the only man with the M4. Yeah, I think uh, CEX in this round, for example, they, they had a good idea of, of needing to hold on to mid control a bit more aggressively, but I think it's just very difficult to do now, especially with the, the sandbags position being taken away. If you get aggressive there, like they tried to do, you're just going to get spammed through that smoke if it comes into play more often than not. So I think that mid position is going to be a uh, one that's really difficult to deal with from the CT side. I, I'll be keeping track for sure on how teams are, are trying to get control of that position because we might see some more utility used to try and get control of mids but in that round it doesn't work out for cex once they lost those initial trades they ended up losing the round impact needs to be careful here playing close range with this famas trying to play a bit of an off angle perhaps well pushing down towards the bottom of the stairs is lnz who gets rid of impact and a man advantage on the t side tab hole with a headshot nuke dog gone and well, the two-man advantage now for Nordridge was no real issues in sight. Brody making his way through the new connector room. I like these uh, this new sort of texture as well. The, the builders are being busy, you know, carving out the bricks, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Is that what builders do, Dinko? Carve out the bricks? The brick layers, maybe. That's uh, something. You can tell I've never been interested in manual labor. No. <laughs> we'll never be interested in manual labor. So, any builders out there? I'll probably hit you up in the future when my shelf breaks or something, because I'm that useless. Yeah, pretty much same. Oh, <laughs> good kill from Brody on the edge of the smoke. Cypher's just going to have to save this AK. Nerd Rage off to a fantastic start here on Vertigo. I was saying earlier, I think this this might be a bit of an unexpected choice from Nerd Rage. I think that CEX uh, could actually not be too ready for this. And uh, I was watching the warm up earlier, and it looked like CEX were kind of teaching each other a couple of names. Aww. So dim, Cypher. <laughs> you got to get those. Well, four zero. CEX finally. This is probably their, this is definitely their best buy. Murky on the op finally, Alex. Could this be? The key that unlocks the door for CEX into Vertigo. They've got to be hoping so. Again, this default setup for the CT side has got two players positioned on B now, which is not what we used to see, but it's more difficult to hold on to. And you can already see Nuke Dog under pressure. A little bit lucky he gets away with his life there. A couple of nades deployed. Nuke Dog takes a bit of damage. But CEX have stopped the early aggression on B. However, they may still be in some trouble because here comes LNZ getting close to this B site. Molotovs on the site, burning away. It's going to be Nerdridge trying to gather their troops up here. Impact swinging into the open to try and take a fight. Nuke Dog from the back of line, so does well to pick up two. Another bomb sits on the floor, and Nuke Dog on for his triple kill. Tadpole doing good work, but it's all onto Tadpole now. In HP, has to ace clutch into the 1v2. Now, this is going to be difficult, but he's got the good position. They're both coming in from CT, <laughs> but his head has been taken off, and that is nice from Murky. Yeah, AWP into Murky's hands is always a big part of CEX's game, part of their success. It closes out this round for them, but it was really Nuke Dog who was the difference maker there on the B-bomb site. Mm -hmm. You need a really good B-site anchor now on Vertigo. You need someone who's going to get multi-kills in that position, and Nuke Dog delivers in this round with the 3k. I think their Nerd Rage had just a bit of a, a difficulty pushing through the smoke was the main problem for them, because the, the Molotovs were pretty good. It, it forced one player out of position, but because the smoke was up, they didn't look too committed through that smoke there. They didn't look like they really got through the smoke quickly enough, so Nuke was able to pick them apart, but here comes the shot from Murky. It actually lands onto Fraser. No kill, though, for the CT side, and Brody has been able to spam through that smoke and get the opening for the Nerd Rage squad. Double up setup, Rage. by the way, to see yeah. it. Nuke Dog, who was so successful on the rifle in the previous, is with the AWP. 
glass, uh, not the glass cannon, but he hasn't got a kit, nor a whole heap of utility, nor a helmet, but you know, up in the armor should be enough. That could be a bit scary on the B site, though, not having that many nades, having an AWP here. He could struggle to yeah, really lock this down. Right? Yeah, and that smoke is missed, which is a shame. Especially since there's not so many places to fall back on on this B-bomb site. He's just got to really rely on hitting this first shot. Moving into the right, using the cover. He needs more than one here, I think. And well, Nuke Dog doesn't get a single kill. Forced back by the Molotov. No impact time to shine with the M4, and he'll only manage one. This is just perfect from Nerd Rage, and I'm not a fan of that double up setup. I think with Nuke Dog playing so well with the rifle in the previous. <laughs> oh my god, Temple doesn't even know you can't plant there. That's just how recent the, sh the changes are. But. At this point, you've just had a huge performance on that the bomb site with Nuke Dog on the rifle. He's got a multi kill from the spot, clearly showing he's capable. Then you toss an AWP into his hands, or he decides to pick one up, and it's just unfortunate for him, really, because it's not exactly the position that's going to reap a whole lot of success from it. Yeah, I think in general, we're probably not going to see too many double AWP setups on this on this Vertigo now, especially on that B side of the map. Maybe you could have a second AWP playing mid and just try and get one kill and then back away and, and go from there. But even then, it's it's not easy to AWP on the B site. And I think the other problem was the position that Nuke Dog decided to play from is one that Nerd Rage have been mollying in almost every round. They've had that Molotov onto the site. So once he gets molotov out of position, it's very difficult to see him getting away with more than one kill there. And I was saying previously, I think it's really important to have someone on the B site that can get away with multiple kills because then you can actually play for retake. But it doesn't happen there with the AWP. And it is a timeout taken now. 5-1 lead for Nerd Rage. This one's starting to look very good for the Nerd Rage squad. And it is a tactical timeout from CEX, which is yeah. not surprising. Oh, they definitely need it. They haven't exactly been in this map just yet. If you're just showing we did have an earlier performance on Vertigo. It was Endpoint taking down Mm -hmm. Idol, 16 to 5. Pretty one sided performance. Could be more of the same here if Nerd Ridge keep this up. Nuke Dog's now got the silenced M4. So he's again playing the B site anchor, but that's a position you probably want the unsilenced M4 in for those multi kills like we saw earlier. Oh, oh hello. Up. Up. Yeah, Brody coming up. It's going to be MT with a double. Tampole and Brody take it away. It's going to be a man advantage in play for CEX. The, the hard-fought battle. Ping's been quiet and... Oh, no. He hasn't been spotted. At least that's something. He needs to win this. Oh, and unfortunately he won't. Impact wins the battle of middle. And well, this is not looking good for Nerd Ridge whatsoever. It's going to take a monumental performance out of LNZ and Fraser to work their way back into this. And well, Fraser caught off towards eight, does leave only LNZ, the lone Swede. They know exactly where he is as well. He's nowhere near that bomb. And this round, deal, it's, uh, it's done. Yeah, damage would still be nice, though. Spots the one player in heaven. There is another player on the bomb site he needs to be aware of, and he's not ready for the double peak. Impact and Nuke Dog combine for the final kill. CEX win a comfortable round, which is going to allow them to build up some bank, which is always nice. And Nerd Rage there, I think, just, just switching up the pace, I think, trying to get an aggressive round quickly on the A site, which makes some sense, I think, after the tactical timeouts taken by CEX. You want to just see if you can quickly deflate them again, quickly get back in their faces, but it doesn't work this time round. And this is where Nerd Rage could maybe do with it, slowing it down in this next round. And the red starts to walk in towards middle. It's impact just behind the smoke. It's going to be under a lot of pressure. Nowhere to hide inside the middle anymore. And we will manage one kill. Brody getting a double. We're into a 4v3. Advantage still sides with Nerd Ridge. Brody barely alive though on 11. This one can definitely turn on its head, but LNZ has made himself known in towards the B bomb site. Really getting comfortable in here now at this point. He's got so much control. They're going to have to deal with him. Stuck on the side. They had no idea. And there's the kill. The Galil sprays away. It rattles away on towards Cypher. A good kill from MT. He does well to find two here. A third kill from MT, and that is huge. Puts it into a 1v1. Murky against Tadpole. Tadpole will move back inside of the site. We'll get the bomb plant through, but now the opera looks for a way back in. The patience is usually a huge attribute of Murky's game. 
He was just waiting the smoke out, but this is smart from Tadpole. Will Murky just spam the spot? He has so many angles to check that really has to clear everything. Moving in towards the bomb side, Tadpole just hiding behind the wood. Molotov goes in towards the corner. This limits the positions, but Tadpole is playing headshot. Looking for the headshot angle. Murky not spamming anything just yet. Smokes the bomb, moves into the open and finds the kill on Tadpole. Going back in for the defuse. There's going to be plenty of time for the opera of CEX. A really tough battle ensued there between the two players, but Murky's the one that comes out on top. Yeah, again, it's a B-centric start to this game from Nerd Rage. Again, they get onto the B site. This time, though, thanks to the lurk of LNZ more than anything, he played that really well to get so much ground on the B site. But a huge triple kill coming in from CEX. And then again, the AWP rotating over from A is required to clutch, but Murky's capable of it. So it's nice having an AWPer who can win those 1v1s, that's for sure, as we see Nerd Rage again up the pace with the pistols. Well, a quick play. Impact's going to drop ping. Brinsley comes in with a deagle, but Impact burns and were away quickly after. That's it. Nine is the weapon that will get him the kill. He does have another chance here now with the M4. His teammate taking a frag on the CZ. And these pistols are proving to be very potent already. A bomb plant. This is uh, successful already for Nerd Ridge. And they have a real chance to walk away with a round win. Murky back in spawn with his teammate Cypher, looking for a mistake, looking for an over-aggressive play. But again, how many times have we seen Murky be successful? Coming back into the bomb site, Cypher this time will assist him. A headshot coming in, two picked up for Cypher, and now it's only Brody, the lone CZ, as he tries to hold on. It's not the full commitment to the stick, but Brody goes away his position, and Murky is ready for the swing. The kill comes through, the round picked up. Yet again, another close one on the B-bomb site. Yeah, I think teams are going to uh, struggle on that CT side to figure out how to deal with those quick rushes with the pistols onto the B site, especially through mid there. They can just jump out so quickly and just overrun the B bomb site. I think the problem for CX was they didn't have much sight on mid at the start of the round, so they quickly got flanked on the B site. They ended up losing the trades, but thankfully the retakes are definitely possible on that B site, and Cypher proves it by getting two huge frags <laughs> to keep them on top of the round. So so CX, There's nowhere to hide. To five. Yeah. There's literally nowhere to hide on that B-bomb site. That's why you can rush onto the site, but once you get it, there's nothing you can do. Like, there's nowhere to hide. So, yeah, it's kind of strange. Yeah, I think it was kind of similar in the old version of Vertigo as well. It was pretty hard to play post-plant on B on the T side because it's difficult to actually see the bomb from stairs all the time, and that's kind of the only place you can really play with solid cover. Well, Cypher, another good kill. He's really a pivotal factor in their success in the last round, this time continuing into the next. Opening kill coming in, man advantage picked up for the CT side. Has been held, not traded yet at all by the T side. Oh, Nuke Dog, here goes the anchor play again. Rifle back into his hand, and you can see it fits much more, fits like a glove. Able to pick off the approaching players. And now a 3v5, a huge advantage here for CEX as they claw their way back in. They tie up the scoreline. It's going to be 5-5, five, five, ping the last remaining player. Murphy's on for his triple. He will collect it. That B-bomb site has started to be a cruel mistress to the Nerd Ridge side. They find a lot of success, yes, taking it early on, but now they're not even finding that. Yeah, to really turn around on that B side of the map. It's been the, the main aim for Nerd Rage in the majority of these rounds. That time it felt as though the nades weren't as potent for them. They, they had the smoke for the generator position, which was good, but the rest of the nades weren't as as on point in that round. They didn't really force Nuke Dog out of his position. It would have been nice if he could have been mollied out there. He ends up just kind of standing his ground, and CEX were very ready for that B play. They rotated over quite quickly there. So Nerd Rage, I think, are going to have to show some more facets of their game on this T side now. They've showed that B play very, very often. CEX, ready for it now. They've started the quick rotations. So I think Nerd Rage have got to show us something else across the map. Maybe not in this round, though, because they've only got pistols, sadly. Yeah, sometimes the pistols are the unsuspecting heroes, though. Frieza hitting the deck ping as well. MT able to pick up two. We've got ourselves a 3v5. I don't think anybody um, is going to be able to feel confident in their T side of, of Vertigo just yet. Yeah, you can come into it with ideas. Yeah, you can come into it with 
an, a, a plan in the way that you want to approach it. But when it gets into the crucial crunch time, when they start to figure each other out, then I don't think there's going to be a, a solid system for anybody to fall back on just yet because it is so fresh and the changes are made incredibly well. And I think that's when we'll start to see the T side maybe start to fall back to the, the old A hits, see what's going on towards there. But these pistols come out of nowhere. LNZ with two on the Tech 9. Now they move on towards the site. Might just get a bomb plan, but anything other than that would be an absolute miracle here for the side. Brody's going to stay back on the ramp. Ellen Z gets back towards short, so maybe there is a chance to win this now, Alex. The positions are assumed. Now they just have to hold off the retake. Yeah, a couple of whiff shots there from CEX has got Nerd Rage into this round. The smoke deployed. Murphy moving in with the AWP. There's the shot he was looking for, and LNZ oh, lines them up, oh. but he only gets the one kill. Impact able to trade. CEX stay on top of the A-sided retake, even though there was a little bit of a fear that they could have lost that round. They come back into it, they get the round win, and they get themselves into the lead. Well, CEX, it's been a long time coming. They had a little bit of a slower start, but they've ground their way back into this game and we've seen that with nerd rage uh, last week when they played against idols they got off to a really good start things are looking good for them but they did start to slip up around the middle of it then they grab control again we'll see if they have the same resilience up against cex i think it's a bit of a different opponent i don't think it's going to be quite as easy we certainly are seeing the the match of the, of the day deliver alex it's delivering in front of our eyes and we'll empty an impact in a crossfire this is nice little bait and switch setup it's going to be impact with the double runs out of ammo and the flash comes over the top but this is just huge absolute the massacre of the nerd raid side freeze is going to start moving forward and murky's there to pick him off freeze hits the deck and it's only brody alex 1v5 round done nerd rage get absolutely nothing in this one yeah, spray for Brody is good for one kill on the round, but that is it. I think one of the, the big differences between these two teams right now has been the differences in the AWPers. Murky has been super solid, even in positions where it's not easy to use the AWP. He's been getting away with kills in these rounds. He's been left in clutches, which he's been able to win. So I, I always want to give a, an AWPer props when they can have impact on Vertigo. Whereas for Fraser, he's not been able to have as much impact with his AWP. He hasn't even got the AWP this time around because of the Murky. Money. That nade, though, has just done a nice chunk of damage onto both Tadpole and LNZ yeah. as Nerd Rage try their luck back on this B site. It's like runner head, beat it off the wall towards A. Doesn't really work. Uh, right, let's go B again. <laughs> see, see if this works. Nuke Dog, though. He yeah, has been a bit of a thorn in their side, and he'll still be here, still trying to cause problems, but he's been whacked up the pit by a flash bang and completely blinded by for a few seconds. But finally, Nuke Dog will get a gap in the smoke to play with, and he's going to manage one. Only the one, though, so MT has to step up. He's had some important kills across the board, but it's Cypher as well, helping and assisting this B-hole. And Frizz up now into a 1v2, and the Galil spray is not so nice to him. He will lose that battle, and it's 8-5 it with CEX winning the half. Yeah, this is one of the things I think is a bit concerning for Nerd Rage on this map, is that Fraser has been their star Rauper throughout the season. I think he's been their best player. And on Vertigo, it's, it's not so easy to get that AWP rolling, especially on the T side sometimes. Oh. You can't get the AWP going. He's having to go to Rifles now, which clearly he didn't look too comfortable on the Galil there. So it's, it's not going too well for Nerd Rage right now. No, Ping's 1 and 11, so also another quiet performance. MT, he's just not stopped Frykeen in these last couple of rounds. Frizz have picked off. It's gone from bad to worse for Frizz, unfortunately. We know he's quite an emotional player as well. So he's probably thinking about this performance a little bit. Ooh. Oh, wow, okay. Great shot from LNZ. Cypher also here, but LNZ taking faces onto the A-bomb site. The smokes are in place, so Murky's not got a great angle to work with. The AWP's trying to find a fight here. He's going forwards. He's trying to deny the bomb plant, but it's already come through. Murky now very much alone, oh. and Brody puts him down. Nerd Rage with the advantage. Yeah, huge kill there from Brody. Coming in, it's going to be Nuke Dog on the flank, though, trying to finish them off. 
He will catch Tadpole, but no one else refacing, no one giving him an opportunity up until that point where Brody swings, but Impact's coming in from behind. He looks to try and end it. He will manage one, but LNZ is continuing to fry. That's his third kill in the round, and he's done enough to scare him off. The round win should come through here for Dirt Rage. He's got himself into a good position. Nuke Dog sprinting on towards the site. The LNZ will fall, but there just doesn't seem to be enough time. Or is there, Alex? Just a few seconds on it. And Nuke Dog will fail to win the round. It's going to be Nerd Ridge with a sixth. And that is pretty much all thanks to LNZ. Yeah, he just makes the play by himself in that round. He was the hero AK, the only man able to buy the rifle. And he just gets those two headshots in quick succession. And we've seen CEX put a, a few of their players on the A side of the map over to that short position, over to that sidewalk position. They're, they've been trying to hold on to that. I think partly because you can't get spams through the wood anymore, so they think they're safer there. But apparently they're not safe against LNZ's reign of terror in that round, coming away with the 3k. And now into the last round of the half, MT playing a dangerous game on the edge of this smoke. Oh. He'll move through the tampo, catches them. It's going to be MT falling away. Murky now holding off as they sprint towards top ramp. Murky, nice shot. Big flick to the right as Brody's been picked off. And now Murky will look to try and relocate as Cypher manages one. The kill comes through from tampo and he wants more, but Murky is there again. He will pick off another. Low HP on Fraser, stuck behind the sandbags. That nade is his death sentence. And that's all on LNZ again. A 1v1 up against Murky this time, who has went nuclear for his side. It's like ships in the night. They will cross in front of each other. And there it is. LNZ yet again. The hero that Nerd Rage need. And he's got them a seventh round to play with. Yeah, Murky was magnificent throughout that first half. But it's not enough at the end there. LNZ, the man who was stepping up for the other team, wins the round for them. So it's an 8 7 half. It's anyone's game right now. I just got to give props, I think, to Murky because orping on Vertigo is, is never easy with all the close range angles you have to take, or, or even medium range angles sometimes on that A site. As soon as you miss a shot, you basically know you're screwed. So Murky had to hit every single shot there, and he almost delivered all of them. Coming down to the clutch, you can't quite win it, but. Murky's been a real consistent performer for this squad. He's always the player. We always, when we see the lineups before the match, we always say to keep an eye on this guy when it comes into the match. And he more than often, often not delivers. So definitely an exciting young player to keep a look at. And I, I, I keep saying this, but it was quite funny when we did the, the winter season now, it's just seeing him just stand there with a cast on his arm. He became the coach of CEX, unfortunately. So. We don't really get to see him deliver just yet to his full potential, but hopefully we will soon enough. I do wonder whether Murky will be able to have as much impact in this second half, though, because we were talking about how it can be difficult yes. to off on that T side. That's... I do feel like he's a pretty proficient rifler as well, though. Yeah. Should be capable. I think if that's what you want in a star player, though, is just being useful in every scenario. They need to be good on the deagles, need to be good on the pistol rounds, need to be good on the rifles and the ops, you know? So I think uh, Murky's a pretty well-balanced player. Um, it's always good to have a player like that in your team. Getting all the angles of Vertigo right now. <laughs> Lovely stuff from our observer, Jakey. He has a couple of nice campaths for this new version of Vertigo. I like it. He had that one on the B site earlier where you get the side on view, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. There we go. There you go. Wow. Pistol time for the second half. It's going to be CEX here with a double flash and a smoke on Nuke Dog. The rest with Kevlar. And over on Nerd Ridge, it's three sets of Kevlar, a diffuse kit, and an aid for the hands. Freeze it and an itchy for LNZ as you move into an important pistol for both teams. We are split down the middle. It's seven. Fraser going to be holding back at mid, but it's the B site where we see the early action. Brody up close with the CZ. Tadpole trying to assist him. Kill's not coming in, though. It's Murky who's pushing through mid, and LNZ is waiting. Murky, though, with the pistol again is having that impact you were talking about. Here comes the fight against Fraser, but impact comes out on top, and CEX should be good to win this round. Brody is done for. He goes jumping <laughs> through the smoke into his death, and Tadpole has one point of health versus four players. Well, Tadpole... Not long for the world. Around the corner. He's never going to grow into a frog in this round, Dinka. <laughs> no, definitely not, Alex. We, that's our weekly pun, is it? It's going to be frog tadpole jokes. It's all we've got at this point.
Well, at least we got to find some sort of Huber in that round because it definitely. I've got another wasn't one, Dinko. Is, is Ping got really high ping or something? Because he's only got one kill. There you go. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's like the most Hulker joke ever, though, to be fair. So. It's not even a joke, um, really, is it? It's just like an observation. No, it's, yeah. It's a question as well. Well, unfortunately, he hasn't really done a whole lot. You know, if his ping was as good, you know, if his kills correlated to his ping, maybe he would be a little bit happier. Maybe. Probably. Unless he's got one ping somehow. Yep, that would be nice. Well, full spy for Nerd Rage into the second round. Deegs across the board. CX have got a couple of rifles in play, though, and they haven't got that Molotov where they wanted it, I think. I think they were practicing that molly and warm up, and it landed in uh, in the heaven in the new position, but uh, not this time. We'll take a few dry runs to get it locked down, and we'll see a lot of teams probably feel quite a bit of utility at the start of this when trying to uh, practice. Under a minute already in play. Murky finally getting first blood drawn into the round. It's going to be LNZ though, answering back with MT hitting the deck. A 4v4 ensues. And with 45 seconds left, the T side of Conger get it over towards B, where Tadpole was trying to hold on, but he's going to fall. Mac Tang gets rid of him, and now the push comes through. Ping, with only one kill, needs to double his kills, or maybe even more, as he looks to the left and right, but he's not landing anything. Overrun, impact finds two, and the round is won here by CEX. Yeah, LNZ's been good in this game, but a 1v4 retake on the B site is not going to be one he's going to win. Maybe if he had a kit, you could maybe give him some sort of chance somehow, but he's just saving, which is the call he has to make here. Good work from CX to remain on top of the situation. Bit of a shame that they do lose this one AK, though, because they only had two AKs at the start of the round. So they're saving the Mac 10s right now. They're saving the Galil. And I don't think they're going to find LNZ's position. So at least something for Nerd Rage to work with in this next round. But he is very much going to have to be the hero for them into the future. For a, a couple of these Nerd Rage players, by the way, it, I, I think if, if just Ping and Fraser can step up slightly, the, the game's pretty close yeah. right now. If they can just get a few more kills on the boards, they're still in this one. Let's be real. They did a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's definitely a lot more. Well, yeah, we have to see if they can make it happen. Fraser, definitely a solid player, just needs to get a little bit of momentum going. I'm, I'm so happy we aren't seeing the T side just spend like a minute spamming that wood now. The, we're actually getting to see just fights Ooh. get taken. Oh my god, okay, Rip Fraser. That is just summarizing his performance here or his time on Vertigo. Just getting boosted up and just instantly domed. Now Ping trying his best, but he's being held here by Impact. He's just going to take the easy kill, surely. But Ping actually skips death for a second here. Maybe walks away with a kill, but Impact gets rid of him. And now it's all on LNZ, left alone, 1v5, he'll manage one, at least stops the clean sheet, but CX go to 11. Money's back in the bank accounts of Nerdridge, so they finally got their allowance, we'll see what they can make happen. Fraser on the AWP, now this is going to be a telltale factor, if Fraser can get going on this AWP, maybe there's a chance, but if not, then a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, Fraser are going to be playing on this A side of the map, but with CEX having a MAC-10 in there, they might not want to go over to that A side early in this round. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some mid control or, well, maybe we will see some A battles. Fraser misses the first shot and that's it. He costs his life because of it. That's what I was talking about earlier. Murky was so consistently landing those shots because he needed to be. As soon as you miss one, you're kind of done and Fraser's out of the round. Well, I think we just need to uh, to start pointing out Fraser because unfortunately, every time we hype him up, he just kind of dies immediately. <laughs> He's not having a great time it's at so all. So good throughout the season, Dinko. This is his first bad game. No, 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 not not in terms of like overall. No, I mean, just no, in these, I know. In these rounds, these last two rounds, That's we really why I highlighted it, it up though because I thought, ah, yeah. oh, it's it's so unfortunate. It is indeed. Well, four v four. 
his side with under a minute left. So yeah, start their approach in towards the top bottom side. Or the bottom bottom side, as it actually is. And it's going to be Cypher with a headshot. Ping picked off. That's a medical ladder. He's doubled them at least. And while Impact will be there for a headshot, Bomb Plant will come through. 2v2 retake. The CT side with a real chance finally at finally getting around on the board, Alex. Oh, Impact going for the fight and he takes it. Tadpole now has to clutch for his team, and it's not going to happen for him. Impact comes away with both the kills at the end. The Impact frags to close it out. 12-7 <laughs> for CEX, and that is a real, real kicker for Nerd Rage. That's a round that they really did not want to lose, because now they're down to pistols. They're down to a weak buy. They're likely 13-7 down in this game. It just looks like CEX are starting to take over on this T side. Yeah, it looks like CX are going to be steamrolling their way to victory if this sort of level continues, because it hasn't really even felt competitive, unfortunately, in the last few rounds. L and Z's been pretty good. I feel like that's that's all we've had today, is just kind of like one guy stepping up from the team that's losing, unfortunately. It's always the potential to have a close game, it's just sometimes uh, the individual's misfiring and cause a little bit of an issue. Now CX gather it. Through the new short take of the B-bomb site. It's going to be Cypher taking the headshot on towards Tadpole. Not really being able to hold on, unfortunately, here. Murky through the back lines of CT is cutting off the rotations. They can't really move forward with much confidence. He will get two in that spray. That's a little wild. I'm surprised he fought so hard there with the AK because they may end up losing that, but Nuke Dog's keeping it safe for now. LNZ, who has <laughs> been landing shots, now can't land shots, finally gets it to go his way. There may be an AK for him. He might try and nade the AK into his hands, but no, he's just going to walk around the corner and take the risk. Where is that AK? Did it fall off the map? Oh, it might have. No idea where it has gone. I don't think CEX recovered it, did they? Well, it might have blocked that. Yeah, because Murky's up against the wall, yeah. so it probably fell off the map, actually. Uh, there we go. Sad times. Murky impaled and his AK gone. Oh, it's another double orb set up on the CT side, Dinko. I'm scared. I'm scared for Nerd Rage. Uh, well, let's see if it works. I mean, they've made <laughs> the call. At this point, throw everything at the wall yeah. and see if it sticks. This is what they wanted. They've made the decision, so we won't we won't bash them for it because it may work out for them. But I don't think we're going to see many double orb setups on the CT side. Yeah, it definitely doesn't really lend itself. I, I always I always feel like ops are just useless on this map nearly. Like there's certain positions you could play it in, but even then, is it really worth the investment for just a few angles you can take fights with? I, I don't know. I think there's definitely other ways to, to approach it. With the Krieg, um, obviously gone now, that used to take up a lot of the spots that the ops could use. You know, the Krieg was so strong at the bottom of that A ramp, but obviously with the Krieg being nerfed, it's not as good anymore, so... You might have to see a little bit more utility usage or even force a couple of players to pick up ops. I wonder if Cypher got boosted up into this position on the CEX side, because Nerd Rage haven't cleared it out. They don't look too aware of it, but they do have an AWP on the B site holding that angle. So CEX need to be aware of the possibility. This impact looking for a head. It's not been given to him so far, but Ping might be in trouble here. Here comes the flash onto the B site. Balls off to force Ooh. Brody away. Now we see Nuke Dog struggle in that position on the other half. Tadpole is backing up his teammate. Cypher has been taken away. And a two-man advantage now on the CT side. Impact might just be caught because LNZ is aware of this possibility. And this round is looking good for Nerd Rage. 27 seconds, Alex. Not a whole lot of time to play with now for the T side. Impact. What a headshot. Two kills picked up. In towards the B bomb side. There's a third. He nearly transfers back and gets the quad kill, but eventually he will fall. LNZ gets the fry game, but it's a 2v2 out of nowhere. Oh, Impact gets his team into the round, just sitting in that smoke. He sees the players before they see him, and he gets away with the triple kill because of it. Nuke Dog playing at the back of the B-bomb site. They've just seen the AWP of Murky on the other side, so Nuke Dog may be able to be unseen in this position. The smoke goes down. Here comes the fight. Nuke Dog about to spot the shoulder. 1v2 for Fraser, moving back into the bomb uh -huh. site. Switches out to the other AK, trying to spray, gets the first kill, but he doesn't get away with it. Murky lands another shot in the clutch. The AWP comes out on top and CEX save themselves in that round. 14-7 CEX that looked all but lost.
but somehow impact delivers impact. There you go. Good one. Dude. Should really try to clutch for a different <laughs> word there, Alex. But uh, you know, at the end, it was just available. Got to do it sometimes. Yeah, that was that was well played by Impact because, uh, like we've we've seen talked about a lot, just sitting in those smokes, you're going to see the players before they see you, and the, we got to see that beautifully because the CT player didn't see anything, and he was basically already dead. Fraser, speaking of, he is now dead himself. Just got a little bit of a uh, hot potato toes. Run away by the Molotov. Another take of the site is in the Molotov towards the back of the boost. Impact holding on towards the bottom of the ramp. The plank can come through. Uh, there's a chance here for LNZ, who will take away Cypher. Utility will head its way in towards the bomb site with Impact finding that kill. Uh, but Brody in a good spot. Now, Tadpole and LNZ. 2v4 left between them. And Murky catches Tadpole trying to run away. Wow. CX going to be up to their 15th round here. LNZ again, the only player getting a kill in this round for Nerd Rage. He's tried his best, but his best has not been enough to get Nerd Rage the round wins they wanted. Oh, wow. That shot somehow did five damage to MT. Doesn't matter, though, because Murky <laughs> is there with the AWP. Another kill on the board for the AWP, who's been so damn good for CEX. Impact has also been great. 23 kills for him. The entire team have had moments where they've stepped up, and it looks almost certain that CEX will be taking this one over the line right now. Yeah, it's been a huge turnaround from them and very impressive showing. I think uh, it's fair to say from CX because there was a time when they were looking pretty uh, pretty out of it, not really too comfortable. It definitely looked like Nerd Ridge with a more comfortable team on Vertigo, but CX dug deep and turned things around, but it might not just be over yet. Still a 5v4, man advantage picked up for Nerd Ridge. Cool. Impact so quick on the trigger, but Ping comes into play in this round. Two kills on the board, doubling his kills in this very round. Murky, though, getting one back over on the A side of the map. And CEX are still in this round, a 2v3 for them, and they give the AWP to the low health player. MT on 19 HP is going to have his turn to try and use the sniper. Well, good wow. kill from Murky. Ping picked off through the smoke. All right, Murky, I think you got a kill through the smoke in the last round as well. A 2v2, CEX. If they make this happen, I mean, the most heartbreaking way for Nerd Rage to, to lose. Even with uh, Ping stepping up, finally getting two more kills onto the board in this round. This is as most impactful he's had so far. So to lose in this fashion, that would be very unfortunate. And well... They do move their way in towards the A site. Smoke up, shoot a lot for the ball plant here from MT. He'll move on through, gets it planted. Now they have to hold on. This Molotov heading in towards the bomb site. Follow up, it could have caught MT, but now it's the 2v2. Lucky to just hold on as the Molotov burns away in the middle of the site. Nerdridge have two players re-aggressing back in from the elevator and the back of the boost. As they move through, LNZ, the first man facing, he will catch Murky, playing an advanced angle, who actually managed to take away Tapball. LNZ has been on point, and he makes it happen again. The 1v1, and he keeps his team alive. The dream is still intact. Yeah, good decision from LNZ just to play for retake there on the A site. You can definitely play it for the retake scenario. It's a big risk there to just try and solo fight on the site. So I like how patient LNZ was there in the first place as he waits for Tadpole to rotate over. And then he won that first fight on short, which was massive. That was one he needed to win. Turns it into the 1v1 and keeps his cool. So Nerd Rage, not out of contention just yet, but they are very much hanging on by the skin of their teeth right now. And that shows in their buy into this round. They may have the AWP, but they've also got two MP9s on Brody and Tadpole, which isn't great. What is great, though, is the early damage they've done. Tadpole quickly gets the kill. Oh, nice relocation of the crosshair from Murky. Flicks over and catches Brody. And that is uh, not the way you want to be losing your life. Murky very, very quick to react. He's on a massacre, Dinko. He's got 29 yeah, he really kills. Is. Playing like a beast. Oh, well, Impact continues to play well as well. 25 kills on the board. It's murky and Impact pushing mid right now. If I were Nerd Rage, I would be scared of those two. Is 
CTs are very stacked on the B side of the map right now. They think they've got this read on point. They may have, but Impact just keeps on winning fights. 2v3 now for Nerd Rage to try and come back into this round, and they are going to start to group up for this B-sided play. CX move forward. It's going to be Ping who gets rid of Nuke Dog. MT able to trade back in. Ping gone. Now a 1v2. The CT side looking for the retake. It's LNZ alone. The man has done everything for his team. The only shining light really for the most of the game. And he's going to run through the Molotov. They know where he is due to the ticks and the sound. And they'll throw another one onto the side itself. LNZ is trying his best, but it's not enough. CEX will walk away with the win. Nerdridge will lose 16 to 8. And that is not the performance that we, they would have been hoping for coming into the match of the day.